Okay, YouTube. Here we go. This is a standard domestic oil boiler. Okay, minus the oil bit. What I did was I... Um, the oil boiler goes in there, or the oil burner goes in there. And I uh, put a Pyrex dish in there. Now I had it, things burning a bit rich and uh, I made a bit of smoke so the glass isn't as clear as it should be. But uh, I don't care at the moment. Um, so that's what's happening. That's my usual um, burner unit. Um, it's been described in other videos so I won't go through it now. Um, and that's a standard, as I say, it's, I think it's a 24 kilowatt, uh, around 70,000 BTUs um, boiler. Um, you can see it there, Grant made it. And oh, there's no writing on it, so I can't see the output, but I think it's 70,000 BTUs anyway. Um, in any case, um, I have it, I have water in there, I have my burner unit connected into the bottom of it. I stuck it up on four poles just to give me access to it. Now, this isn't pretty, this is just to see if it works. There's no point in going any further with it. As you can see, the glass is black. Now that's my fault. This burner will burn absolutely clean. Um, and a standard boiler. That's the jacket of the uh, of the actual boiler itself. It had insulation between the boiler, so it's mental windy here at the moment. 20, 30 mile an hour winds, and we've got um, water in that unit, and I have it blowing. There you go. Steam into the atmosphere, and you can see the steam blowing all over the shop. But in any case, um, really easy to do. Nothing, nothing elaborate about it. As you can see, I just tacked on um, four poles for legs and uh, connected the burner into it. Stuck the uh, the optics on it so you could see what was going on if I hadn't blackened the glass. Um, and that's the amount of oil I'm burning at the moment. And there's the steam I'm generating. Okay, so this there's no question of it. This definitely would heat your house. You now, as I say, that's only a 70,000 BTU boiler. If you've got a big ass house, 70,000 BTUs or 24 kilowatts isn't going to do it. But a um, standard house, you know, 1200 square feet, whatever, insulated fairly well, as long as you don't live where there's 40 feet of snow. Um, and in Fahrenheit, Obviously, it's hot enough to uh, to boil water, and of course, if I put the laser on the the burner unit, that'll be you know six or seven hundred degrees. This thing only goes to five thirty, so we're off the scale at that. The pot out. Oh, there you go. The red bits of the pot then uh, should go off the scale, but stainless steel is it. A little funny metal. Anyway, that's what we've got. So the boiler is uh, is working. You know, if you put a, a pump on that, circulating pump, connect it into a heating system, uh, it would be very unruly heat. You know, you it's not thermostatically controlled. It won't switch on and off like a, a domestic uh, oil boiler unit can. But if you were, you know, a little bit of imagination. Uh, could heat a buffer tank until the buffer tank kind of got up to temperature and um, and then a thermostatic uh, controlled solenoid to shut off the oil. So you'd have to come out and light it every time, whatever, but you know, if you had big enough buffer tank or if you had underfloor heating, you could heat the floor. Uh, typically with underfloor heating, it um, it stays warm for, you know, more than a day. So, you know, you heat it today, get it to temperature, it switches off, drive it again tomorrow up to temperature. I actually have underfloor heating here myself, and uh, I'm sorely tempted to connect something like this in. Um, this burner unit, you know, it's just very reliable. If you've got nice clean fuel, no water in it, uh, it lights uh, within seconds, and that's it. You know, if you set the oil right, you just walk away. Uh, it's it's dark outside, so there's no point in me going out to show you. Um, smoke from the, the chimney. Um, there won't be any anyway, not at this rate. As I say, I had the, I allowed too much fuel to go into the uh, to the pot 
before I actually ignited it. When I ignited it then, uh, it misbehaved a bit. So I mean, if you're careful with this unit, um, it's safe. I mean, there you go. I, <laughs> you know, I'm generating steam. Um, there's an open pipe there, so I can't generate pressure within the stove. And uh, I have to switch it off shortly anyway, because I don't want to uh, damage the inside of that in case I want to use it. But this is just an old stove I had knocking around, or a boiler rather, I had knocking around in the house. Not in the house, but in the shed. Uh, someone gave me a while ago. I planned on doing this with it. And uh, because the, the YouTube videos have been incredibly, <laughs> for me anyway, incredibly successful. I, I never expected so many people to be interested. So uh, anyway, I had planned doing this anyway. And uh, I thought, okay, I'll do a video while I'm, while I'm throwing it together. But um, it's just horsing out heat. Uh, just heat off the burn chamber. You know, that would heat your space, you know, your workshop. Uh, you would obviously have that boiler insulated and uh, you'd have a circulating pump, thermostats, blah 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 on it, you know, you'd have to look after your control system. But there you go, plenty of steam. And it wouldn't do that if it wasn't delivering the heat. Now, I took the baffles out of this particular unit um, and that's them there if they show up. And the reason I pulled the baffles out is because they, um, they were set up for a uh, burner that has a blower on it, it was generating positive pressure within the stove. Whereas, you know, we've got a flue on it, we're creating negative pressure. Uh, and it, it wasn't working that well. But if I re-engineered it, the baffles and make the holes in them bigger and so on, I could um, make the boiler more efficient. But, you know, this is just um, prototype one, if you like, of, uh, of this. But there are other ways of, um, of generating heat within a boiler. Babington boiler, uh, torque burner, whatever, Th there's a few. Um, even modifying um, a domestic um, burner unit, um, Benton or, or any of them, uh, with a, a siphon nozzle and so on. Uh, I mean, there are several ways of doing it. This is just, you know, what I could do today. And uh, I'm very impressed. You know, no electricity. If I had a, um, a storage tank higher than that, I, it would siphon feed. You know, so no electricity, just a bit of oil, a valve, and a bucket. Um, there you go. Straight out of that, into that elbow, down, through that gate valve, a bit of flexi, and straight into that hole. That's it, not complicated, not hard. And um, the burner unit, you can see it's nice and red, it's thrown out heat, I can feel it here. So I mean, that would heat a, a smaller space. My shed here is... Um, uh, 20 feet by 30 so uh, and it's a steel shed so it's cold and that just wouldn't be up to it however um, on the previous video I made this thing and this is brilliant this is stunning and uh, I don't uh, you can't really the the, the uh, boarding unit comes up through the middle of that and um, and lives in there at the bottom it's dark now so it's hard to see but great setup anyway I've rambled on enough. This is really good. If anybody wanted to try it, um, careful about blowing your house up or setting it on fire or whatever, you know. Um, you know, you've got at the end of the day, you know, you've got to be able to sit down, and uh, you can't do that if you burn your house down. So, anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye.